In today's Medicoyabs Masterclass, we will learn about antidiuretic hormone or ADH. Antidiuretic hormone is also called as vasopressin. Let's start with the synthesis. It is synthesized in hypothalamus and from there it is moved and stored to posterior pituitary. In hypothalamus, the synthesis occurs in supraoptic nucleus and from that supraoptic nucleus with the help of binding protein neurophysin, it is moved to posterior pituitary where it is stored in pituitocytes. Now from posterior pituitary, vasopressin is released into the circulation where it acts on two different receptors, the V1 receptors and V2 receptors. V1 receptors is present on blood vessels which where it leads to the contraction of smooth muscles and the constriction of blood vessels. The constriction of the blood vessels will lead to the increase in systemic resistance. The V2 receptors are present on kidney where they will lead to fluid reabsorption. The action of fluid reabsorption mainly happens at the collecting tubules level and the distant convoluted tubule level. At both this level, that is the collecting tubules and distal convoluted tubule level, there is an increase in the permeability which leads to the fluid reabsorption. Now, as a result of this fluid reabsorption, the blood volume increases. Both this increase in the systemic resistance and increase in the blood volume leads to increase in the arterial pressure. One important point here to mention that ADH, the sensitivity of V2 receptor is much 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 higher than the V1 receptor. So ADH primarily will cause fluid reabsorption as compared to increase in systemic resistance or constriction of blood vessels. Although it will have that action, but the action on V2 receptors because of sensitivity is much higher. At the blood vessels level, there is baroreceptors and at the kidney level, there is osmoreceptors which gives various stimulating and inhibiting signals. Uh, let's talk about one of all these signals one by one. First is the osmolarity. What happens when the blood osmolarity increases? Osmolarity increases means blood becomes thicker. So if blood is thicker, you want the body to conserve fluid. If, want, if you want the body to conserve fluid, you want fluid reabsorption to happen. So you want, so it is a kind of stimulating uh, for ADH production and secretion. The reverse happens in cases of decreased osmolarity. Same logic can be applied for blood volume or extra fluid, uh, cellular fluid. If blood volume or extracellular fluid decreases, which means blood becomes thicker, again you want the body to conserve fluid, you want the fluid reabsorption to happen. So this is a stimulating factor for vasopressin or ADS secretion. Angiotensin 2 again is one of the known and very important AD, uh, antidiuretic hormone stimulating factor. Sympathetic stimulation and carbamazepine are other stimulating factors. Alcohol and cold environment on the other hand is a inhibiting factor for antidiuretic hormone. That is why when you, you know, drink alcohol, you will go to for toilet a lot many, many times. Similarly, thing happens in cold environment. So once again, the production happens at hypothalamus, specifically in the supraoptic nucleus. From there, with the help of binding protein neurophysin, it is moved and is stored in posterior pituitary, especially in the pituitocytes. From there, it is released into the circulation V1, V2 receptors. V2 receptors is much more sensitive to ADH. At V2 receptor level, there is a fluid reabsorption, especially at the collecting tubule and distal convoluted tubule level, which leads to increased volume. At V1 level, there is a smooth muscles constriction and blood vessel constriction leading to the increase in systemic resistance leading to the arterial pressure. After learning the physiology, let's look at the pathology and the clinical manifestations. Two end of a spectrum, either the ADH decreased secretion manifestations will be there or ADH increased secretion will be there. In cases of decreased secretion, it is called as diabetes insipidus. In, in cases of ADH increased secretion, it will be syndrome of inappropriate antidiuretic hormone that is SIADH. Let's first look at diabetes insipidus. It can be two types, central and nephrogenic. Very simple to understand, at, in central diabetes insipidus, there is a production failure. Whereas at nephrogenic, there is a renal hyposensitivity to the ADH which is circulating in the body. So, both will have a similar feature. 
दैट इज इंक्रीज इन डायल्यूशन ऑफ यूरिन और इंक्रीज यूरिन डायल्यूशन द मैनेजमेंट इज यू गिव सिंथेटिक ए डी एच एनलॉग विच इज डेज मोपरेशन इन केसेज ऑफ एस आई ए डी एच द क्लिनिकल फीचर्स इज दर इज इंक्रीज इन यूरिन ऑस्मोलैरिटी एंड डिक्रीज इन सोडियम बेसिकली वॉट हैपन्स ए डी एच इंक्रीजेज सो बॉडी इज ट्राइंग टू रिटेन ऑल द फ्लूड सो वॉट एवर द यूरिन आउटपुट इज इट विल बी हाईली ऑस्मोलर सिमिलरली देर विल बी वॉटर इंटॉक्सिकेशन सो वॉटर इंटॉक्सिकेशन हैपन्स इन एस आई ए डी एच क्लिनिकली द पेशेंट विल बी यू वॉल्यूमिक द मैनेजमेंट इज डेमोक्लोसाइक्लीन और लिथियम अनदर इंपॉर्टेंट ब्रेन डिजर्व क्वेश्चन एट दिस पॉइंट वुड बी हाउ डू यू डिफ्रेंसिएट बिटवीन नेफ्रोजेनिक एंड डायबिटीज विच इज सेंट्रल सो डायबिटीज इंसिपिटस विच इज सेंट्रल एंड डायबिटीज इंसिपिटस विच इज नेफ्रोजेनिक हाउ कैन यू डिफ्रेंशिएट सो अन ईजी वे वुड बी बाई एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन ऑफ एक्सोजीनस वैसोप्रेसिन इन केसेस ऑफ सेंट्रल डी आई बिकॉज वी हैव गिवन एक्सोजीनस ए डी एच the defect is corrected and so there would be a decrease in the urine volume and increase in the osmolarity of urine but because in nephrogenic uh, diabetes insipidus the problem is at the receptor level so even after giving external anti diuretic hormone there will be no such change seen thank you